human clackers ring the famine bell, and education and desiccation for the children. Do the starved dream of banquets? And we could have fed them all, but we were in line at the golden buffet, the klepto, kinetic, greed, gravity, consuming for consumption's sake. Do you too suffer from overindulgence? Okay, uh, this next story is pretty heavy and a little bit longer than the others, so. Thank you guys. This is called Providence. Providence. From the dictionary, looking to or preparation for the future. Provision or skill or wisdom in management, prudence, or the care or benevolent guidance of God or nature, or an instance of this. It was Tuesday evening and there were many new faces in our 12-step recovery group. I had expected this because I had requested an open invitation be placed in all the cell houses and run on the TV's message channel. Still, with nearly 1,500 inmates in this prison, Having a little over a dozen show up was less than I had hoped for. I passed the attendance sheet around and made sure there were enough seats for everyone. I sat near the door and when one of the new guys sitting next to me chose to get up and go to the other side of the room, I didn't think much of it. Often newcomers value their space and want as much space as possible. I then asked for volunteers to read and a couple of regulars volunteered, but we still had to find somebody to read how it works. And that man who had moved raised his hand for it. And I went over to make sure he knew what to read and let him borrow my copy of the big book. I couldn't place it, but I vaguely remembered this guy. He was wiry and he had an old number, which meant he'd been in the system for a while. However, with all the times I'd moved into different facilities, I'd cro often cross paths with people I'd done time before with. So he read how it works. And then I read the daily reflection. It was called a world of the spirit. We have entered the world of the spirit. Our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. This is not an overnight matter. It should continue for our lifetime. It continued, I understand spiritual things to be unconditional love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control and humility. Anytime I allow selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear to be part of me, I block out spiritual things. As I maintain my sobriety, growing spiritually becomes a lifelong process. My goal is spiritual growth, accepting that I will never have spiritual perfection. And I read that sincerely. These words resonate with the beliefs I've embraced in my life. We then had a moment of silence for the still-suffering alcoholic out there on the bridge or under it followed by the serenity prayer, and the meeting was open for sharing. The daily reflection topic is typically the inspiration for the group discussion, so I added that spiritual growth takes work, just like physical growth. If we want our muscles to grow, we wouldn't just talk about it or read about muscle magazines all day. We actually have to exercise. We have to do it regularly. And just so, I proposed is our practice of prayer and or meditation only effective if we build a routine that we can stick to in our day-to-day -day lives? It's one of those things to choose to be more kind or less angry, but it's an entirely different thing to put that into practice. After that, the new guy who had seemed familiar to me spoke up, we'll call him Dan, and Dan explained he'd recently returned to prison. A death in his family had led to a serious relapse but he wanted to express the importance of his spiritual practice, but first he had to share something else. He looked directly at me and he said, I've got to get something off my chest. You killed my homie. You killed my friend and he was a good guy. He didn't deserve to die. And that took my breath away. And the room was charged with unexpected, powerful emotion. I did my best not to shut down, not to defend, only to breathe and to listen. He continued, 
I recognize you by your tattoo, and I didn't know if I was going to be able to stay in this room tonight. Not until this very moment did I know if I could ever forgive you. But I can tell you're trying to change. I saw all the parts you had underlined in your book. And when you took charge of this meeting, it helped give me a change of heart. And now I feel that I can say I forgive you. Wow. This was cathartic, but for the other dozen or so guys that it didn't pertain to, I wasn't sure how to proceed. Usually in meetings, there's no crosstalk, no direct talk to another or response. And, and I said, Dan, from the bottom of my heart, I'm grateful for your forgiveness, and I'm sorry for any and all the pain that I've caused you. There's much more I'd like to say, but I don't think this is the time or the place. He agreed, but couldn't help but continue. I was in county jail back in 2003 when they bought you back from Florida, and I was trying to find you so that I could attack you. There were a lot of us trying to get at you. And I remembered where I'd last seen him nearly nine years ago. There are guys in here now who think I should still handle this. But maybe everything happens for a reason. Maybe had you not killed him, he would have died in a drunk driving accident and killed his family too. I could tell how conflicted Dan was between the habits of his past and the new path he was trying to follow. I said, if you'd be willing to talk with me after the meeting, I would sincerely appreciate it. And on that note, some of the other guys shared, although we had already used up much of our meeting discussion time. So we wrapped up the group, and Dan and I hung back to talk while we put the chairs away, and I repeated my apology and how many regrets I had. I expressed how much alcohol had played a factor. Although I did not try to justify my actions, I had to be sure I was considerate of his feelings. Dan told me how he was there at his friend's funeral. He told me how his friend's son hit him on the head with an action figure and said, my daddy gave me this, he's in heaven now. These details of the painful reality were so hard to hear, but I needed to hear it all. The burden of having killed is incredibly heavy, and it will always be with me. I see so many veterans in here, and although most don't discuss it, I sense they have similar burdens, with no quick fix or absolution. I told Dan that I truly hoped he'd come back next week, and how much courage I thought it took to share all that he did with the group. After the meeting, I was both energized and wiped out. I needed to meditate and pray. I felt like I was right about to cry, but yet somehow I couldn't, even though I willed for tears to come. So terrible to relive that night I was attacked and how I reacted out of fear and rage. Such a mix of emotions that turn murky brown and indistinguishable like too many crayons on scribbled paper. Ultimately, it reminded me that, that free or not, I still had so much healing to do. I was happy that the spiritual work I've done so far had allowed me to listen that night with some equanimity and allow the other man the opportunity to drop the weight of his animosity and reach some reconciliation in his own heart. And next week at our group, I was eager to see if Dan would come, and he did, and he was there, along with a few new faces. And unbelievably, the topic for the daily reflection of that day was forgiveness. Love and tolerance of others is our code. I have found that I have to forgive others in all situations to maintain any real spiritual progress. The vital importance of forgiving may not be obvious to me at first sight, but my studies tell me that every great spiritual teacher has insisted upon it. I must forgive injuries, not just in words or as matter of form, but in my heart. I do this not for the other person's sake, but for my own. Resentment, anger, or a desire to see someone punished are things that rot my own soul. Such things fasten me to troubles with chains. They tie me to the other problems which have nothing to do with my original problem. When I read that, it was almost spooky for everyone who had been there for previous week's meeting. I didn't need to see the face of God, but there was a presence, a deep sense of meaning behind this seeming coincidence. And whether it was karma, kismet, serendipity, I like the word providence. <laughs>